In this use case, we'll be exploring some of the functionality built into the cloud management platform for managing resources after a VM is provisioned. This allows users to stay in a single UI for managing the whole lifecycle of the requested resources. In this example, I'll be logging in again as the line of business user, so again, someone who may not be completely familiar with all the underlying infrastructure, but still needs to get access to IT services and interact with them after provisioning. So I'll click Login. And upon login, I'm taken to the dashboard for the user. Now, as I said, we do want to interact with a VM for this particular use case. And while I could use the ones that I provisioned earlier, I'm going to go ahead and deploy one specifically for this demonstration. So I'll go ahead and deploy a single virtual server. I'll just name this something like VM Management. And I'll pick an image. Select my flavor. So essentially, what size do I need this virtual machine to be? And I'm going to go ahead and set a user ID so that we can interact with this after provisioning as well. So this will happen at provisioning time, and then we can use this to access the VM later. I'll click Deploy. And if we'd like to watch the progress, we could go ahead and click Request. Now this will take just a couple minutes, so I'll cut away and then come back, and we can check out the progress after this completes. Now if I were to go ahead and put on my administrative hat and actually want to see things that are going on within the VMware infrastructure, I can pull open the vSphere client, and we can see in this instance that the virtual machine is being cloned right now and it's about 60% complete. So this will take just another minute or two to actually do the copying out and then completion from the IBM Cloud Orchestrator perspective. So we'll check in when that does complete. Okay, and now you can see that I've refreshed the page. Our request has been completed successfully. And now as the end user, I can go ahead and look at the resources that I have available if I click on the resources link. And specifically, we wanna look at the virtual machines right now. So here we see my virtual machine named VM Management. And if I want to click on the virtual machine name, I can see some additional details about that individual virtual machine. So for example, what is the IP address, what flavor was used to deploy it, and even what base image was used to deploy that as well. But specifically for this use case, what I would like to do is focus on the actions over here on the left side of the screen. So within the resources context of a specific virtual machine and also multiple virtual machines, but maybe we'll get into that in another video, we can take actions against this particular VM or set of VMs. So to start, I'd just like to go ahead and stop the VM. So it'll ask me to confirm that. I'll say yes. The action's been launched. And what we could see if we were now the administrator is that the VM was actually powered off. So this allows your users to get access to the underlying infrastructure and interact with the resources that they have without actually giving them IDs on the actual VMware infrastructure, which is definitely a good thing. If I flip back over to my main window and I click refresh, we can now see that this VM has been indeed shut off. So the user gets recognition that the action succeeded as well. Now, likely after they shut it off, the next thing they would want to do would then be to start it. So let's go ahead and kick that off now as well. You'll notice this time that I use the checkbox on the VM listing as opposed to going into the details. So we can launch these actions in multiple ways. It doesn't always have to be on the detailed menu and that would also allow us to take actions against multiple systems if I had several deployed. So again, we see the action's been launched. From the VMware perspective, we can see that we've now powered on the VM. And again, if I refresh since I'm not a patient person, we can see that the VM is now active again. So let's look at some of the other actions that we can do. The next thing I'd like to show you is how we can execute a script against the VM. So this may be something that you would like to disable in your environment if you don't want particular users to access it. But that being said, they do need a user ID on the system to be able to access it. So anything that they could do through the tool, they could do manually. This just gives them a nice front end to be able to do so. So I'll go ahead and select the operating system type. I'll say the network that we want to use, and I'll provide some credentials. So I'll go ahead and use the cloud username. We can specify a timeout, and then we can either execute a command or upload a script and use that script to execute. So I'm going to go ahead and just do something simple like an if config and redirect that out to a file. And let's go ahead and use a working directory that we know the user is likely to be able to write to, like their home directory. And let's go ahead and press OK. So again, we see the action's been launched. And actually, we can track this in the request dialog so we can see that our execute script VM management has now succeeded. Now to actually verify that this worked, let's go back to the resources and connect into this VM. So we'll grab the IP address from the VM details, and I'll go ahead and SSH over to this machine. And I'll log in. 
and if we cat the file, we can see that the information in there is what we would expect. And just to prove that I didn't pre-stage this, we can see that it was touched a minute ago. So this was definitely created by the execution of the script through the UI. Now, the last thing I'd like to actually show is the ability to resize a VM. So essentially, we've had this VM out there running, and now let's just say we need to make it a little bigger. So we can see that the current flavor right now is small, and that has a particular set of resources associated. And let's go ahead and actually look at that from a VMware perspective, not that the user would be doing this, but just to show you that indeed we are changing things on the VM. So right now we see we have one virtual CPU, about two gig of memory, and a disk size of about 22 gig. So let's go ahead and say now I want to resize this virtual machine. Again, we'll see the current flavor and have the ability to select the target new flavor. So I'll go up one size, we'll go from small to medium, and again press OK. That'll kick off the action. We could again track this through my requests as well. We see that resize VM management is now in process. And if we flip over to the VMware console, Indeed, we're starting the process of reconfiguring this virtual machine. So we see that we reconfigured it, we're powering it off, and we'll be updating the disk size as well. So this will take just a couple minutes, so I'll cut away and we'll check back when the request completes to make sure that everything completed successfully. All right, I've refreshed the page, and now we can see that the resize VM management has completed successfully. If I go back over to our resources page and look at the VM, we can see that the flavor is now M1 medium, as we would expect. And lastly, if we flip back over to the vSphere client, we can see that now the VM has two virtual CPUs, four gig of memory, and 44 gigabytes of disk. So the changes did take effect on the VM. So that wraps up this use case. Again, we're showing how we can use the cloud management platform to not only provision various resources, but also manage them after the fact, all from a single UI.